Okay, um, thank you all for coming again. Um, but before I start my speech, I just wanted to say a quick prayer, so if everyone will bow their heads with me and pray. Um, dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for helping us all get to this point and accomplish everything that we have done this year. I pray that all the nerves will go away for peace, boldness, courage, and confidence to speak well. And I pray um, that everyone in this room will hear what they need to hear and that you would show them um, who you desire them to be. Amen. Okay, so for my capstone experience, I pursued elementary education. Um, I want to be able to change these children's lives the same way like my fourth, day, fourth grade teacher has changed the way that I look at school in general. She has made learning a lot more fun and rewarding, and she gave me the desire to strive to be better. Um, she always supported me in everything that I did, um, and she encouraged me and helped me in every way that she could. Um, she helped us um, strive to be better by rewarding us. And another example is my sister, Kara. She teaches middle school math in a public school, and um, she's able to spread the word of God to her children, even though it may not be the same as it would be in a pri public school, private school. <laughs> <laughs> she talks about her trip to Kenya and Haiti, um, and she has her students create a thankfulness calendar by adding one thing every day um, about something that they are thankful for. This lets the students know that there's always something to be thankful for and a blessing to count. I was able to talk with a close family friend of mine named Becca, who teaches in, a middle, er, in an elementary school in Kansas, and she is able to apply her faith by the way she demonstrates a Christ-like attitude. Um, she is able to stay positive with her students and um, focus on the beauty of love and differences, and she teaches her students about that too. Um, I have been told by many people to pursue what I love and to follow God's calling in my life. This is good for the world, I think, because um, to, it spreads the word of God to children, and I am able to be a light in their lives. Um, I chose this field of education for my capstone experience because I have a passion for kids. Despite their flaws or weaknesses, I love them no matter what, and I want to help them enjoy life and learning more. The two verses that I feel that pertain most to my capstone is Deuteronomy 6, 1 through 2, which says, These are the commands, decrees, and the laws your Lord, the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord uh, your God as long as you live by keeping all the degrees, decrees and commands that I give you, so that you may enjoy a long life. And also Proverbs 22, 6, which says, Train up a child in the way that he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Um, while these two verses don't directly relate to teaching, um, they gave me a good example of how to raise a child with the right mindset and morals. Um, one lesson that kept reoccurring while I was doing my capstone was the virtue of patience. I learned that I need to become a more patient person when it comes to all circumstances in life. Um, I realized that this when I talked with Miss Vlasov, who is the fifth grade teacher over at the elementary side of campus here at Front Range. I was playing a math game with her students, and they were practicing factoring. I had to have patience with the kids in my group because um, they hadn't fully learned how to factor yet, and so I was able to help them out a little bit. Um, uh, this affected me because I think having patience is one of the many uh, one of the many main keys that you need to have as a teacher in order to help um, your students understand the material better. The, I think the kids were affected by the way I treated them with the respect that I did because um, this respect that I treated them with wasn't like the respect that all teachers treated them with. Um, and, <laughs> uh, and I think they responded to that well, and they also treated me differently than they did with their teachers. And I think that was because I'm younger and I can kind of relate to them a little bit better. But, yeah. And so, also this year I got the opportunity to sit in on a classroom with one of my close family friends, Logan Hoyer. She is a Christian and she teaches at um, an elementary school in Highlands Ranch called Bear Canyon Elementary School. She didn't have much planned for me to do besides just simply sit in her classroom, watch how she taught, and how she 
dealt with kids who weren't doing what they were told to do. Um, I was able to see the many skills that she had by just watching her read to her students and um, watching the way she helped specific students in different areas in their life. Um, this helped me gain some patience because um, I wanted to be doing something for her, but it took me a minute to realize that it was okay to just sit, observe, and soak it all in. Um, I think that being a teacher can be tough at some points, especially when kids um, are misbehaving or disobey you. Um, but if you continue to get upset with your students, your students will no longer um, respect you as a person and they won't trust you um, as a teacher anymore as much as they did before. Um, I think time management is super important for um, every teacher to have. Um, I noticed this when I was at lunch with Logan Hoyer. She showed me some of um, her lesson plans and um, some of the ways she organized her papers and the way that she um, made assignments more entertaining um, and engaging for her students. And that was really cool for me to see. Other aspects in my life where I need to practice having patience is in my relationship with God. I think most of the times I um, get caught up in what I want to do and focus on, on what I want to do rather than um, focusing on what God wants me to do and what his calling is for my life. Um, but when in reality, I just need to gain some patience and wait for God to lead me down the right path. And along the way, oh wait, <laughs> just kidding. Um, so my, <laughs> my life verse is Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, which says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understandings, and all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Um, so I know I love this verse because it's just honestly a constant reminder to me to be patient and to wait for God to lead me down the path in which he wants to lead me down because the road he was going to lead me down well, <laughs> is going to be rough and bumpy, but that's okay. And he'll be there to like help me out along the way. Um, in my life, I've seen the virtue of patience being shown is shown in practice is with all my teachers here at Front Range. Um, all my teachers have been encouraging, understanding, and patient with me when it comes to projects and assignments. Um, the one teacher, or throughout my capstone experience, the one teacher that has challenged me most was um, Mr. Butler. Uh, he showed me what being a good and helpful teacher looks like, and I am extremely, I am extremely thankful for the com community here that we have at Front Range, and all these teachers have truly, sh truly shown me how to become a patient, more patient person. So for this year, I have been trying to focus on what virtues that I would need in order to be a successful teacher. I had the opportunity to interview Ms. Padgett, who is a sixth grade teacher here at Front Range, um, and she taught me that the Hmm. Teachers should have a genuine love for their students. So I asked her while I was talking to her, um, what kind of qualities or virtues do you think are more, most important for um, a teacher to have today? And her response was that genuine love for the student as an individual because it is easy to look at them as a whole and judge them based off of how they um, behave and how they are just as a whole group and not as an individual. I really loved how she responded to this question because I had never really thought of it that way. And honestly, it made me look at each student differently um, and made me see that some of these kids will and are going through um, the same things that I did in elementary school. Um, and I can relate to those things, but others will go through things that I will not be able to relate to, but that's okay. And um, I think truly understanding each student as an individual is super important. Um, when I was talking with my friend Becca, um, she said that students more than ever today are coming with challenges academically, socially, and behaviorally. Um, she continued to explain to me how it is difficult to find enough time in the day to um, love on each student as, um, and help them in areas that they need to be helped in. And um, I realized that everyone's or both students and teachers want to help, but everyone's lives are busy. And so um, 
there are a lot of different things that need to be accomplished as a teacher and as a student um, day in and day out. So being intentional about um, making time for each student is a way that you can be a successful teacher. Um, Becca also told me that an important virtue to have is passion because it drives each each it drives a teacher to see each student as an individual and allows them to focus on the most important things within education. Um, and I loved how she responded or how she answered that too. And um, I realized that from my past experiences, the reason why I liked my fourth grade teacher so much was because of the genuine love that she showed towards me and the fact that she cared about me and helped me in every way that she could. Um, one example of how Miss Martin, my fourth grade teacher, showed this love was with Hank Bucks. She um, handed out Hank Bucks if you got a good grade on an assignment or if you did something that was kind. Um, and at the end of the year, we could cash in our Hank Bucks for a prize. This gave each student something to strive to earn, both academically and behaviorally. For me, I, uh, it can be difficult to imply, or for me, showing this love would be difficult to imply, I think, especially when kids are misbehaving or they are constantly off task. Um, it is hard to show love and be kind towards those kids who, um, who are off task and misbehaving. And honestly, that kind of scares me. Um, I will not, um, in some situations, I know that I will not know how to handle students and how they behave. Um, but um, I'm sure as a teacher, as time goes on, you, that's something you get better at. Um, my student, or I can see myself building relationships with my students and giving them high expectations on what I want for them in my classroom. Um, I want to show these kids that they are cared for and loved. Um, and um, no matter how good a teacher you are, kids will be kids and they need to be disciplined at, some time, at, at times. I can see myself giving um, consequences such as like going out to the hall for a few minutes, letting themselves gather themselves and calming down. Or if they think they'd be okay to just stay in the classroom, I'd let them stay. But later I'd have to talk to them about their behavior. Um, Becca is able to apply her faith by the way she loves, or hmm, by loving and encouraging her students to learn to resolve conflict well and um, learn to treat others with respect always. Um, Becca is able to demonstrate or help her students work through difficult circumstances um, Becca is also um, is able to stay positive with her students by always trying to focus on the positive and teaching her students the beauty of love and differences. Um, she is, um, since she is able to, to stay positive and encouraging to her students, this creates the trust between her students that not all teachers do have. So I believe, like Ms. Pageant, that the genuine love for each student as an individual is important to have. Um, loving your students can, in the end, help you become more confident in school and in their everyday lives. There is a podcast, Scientific Secrets of Raising Kids Who Thrive, um, that emphasizes the love a parent must have for a child to succeed. It explains... Um, how to raise a child who thrives, and it gives uh, real life examples on how to parent a child who thrives. This podcast that I listen to relates to my capstone because even though it gives situations for parents, it can relate to teachers because it can give them a better understanding of where their students are coming from and the background that they grew up in and how that may impact um, their learning. Parenting and teaching is very different, but teachers do spend a substantial part of the day with their students, so at points, um, I'm sure it feels like parenting. But being knowledgeable about child psychology can help you become a better teacher because you, um, because you will have a better understanding about each student as an individual and how they are wired. Each student is different, but understanding the why behind behaviors can assist you in helping them succeed in different areas. 
Um, the main point behind this podcast is to illustrate how people should parent their children and how they can do that well. This podcast gives examples and real life experiences on why kids are the way they are and how to deal with them in all circumstances. This book encourages parents to help their child thrive, um, to become not only good learners, but also well-behaved kids. This podcast is full of interesting facts, statistics, and tips on how to raise a child who thrives. As a parent um, and a teacher today, there are a lot of expectations on how you're supposed to influence kids' lives. One main thing that I learned from this podcast is that you have to, um, you have to care for kids. Showing that you care by either rewarding them or disciplining them in the right way can and will go a long way with kids these days. After listening to this podcast, I'm more educated on the actual science behind kids. I highly recommend this podcast to an adult who wants to become a parent one day or um, even for teachers who want to have a better understanding on how to interact with their students. Overall, my capstone experience this year has been very beneficial. I got to experience what um, being a teacher looks like in both a public and a private school. Um, I'm happy I got the opportunity to sit on, on the classrooms that I did and ask the questions that I had for the teachers who are currently on the front lines. Um, everyone that I reached out to this year have been super encouraging and welcoming uh, to me um, open to the idea of me coming in and helping them and asking them questions. Um, all these teachers that I met with have taught me about what I want in life regarding work and teaching. A challenge that I wanted to leave everyone with, it, everyone with is that no matter where you are in life, learn how to be someone who is patient, someone who is able to show love, and someone who wants what's best for the people around you. If you are a student, have patience with your teachers, classmates, and your parents. Love everyone no matter what you are going through because every encouraging word can and will go a long way with the people around you. If you are a teacher, continue to be encouraging and helpful to your students because that can also go a long ways. If you are a parent, pour love and encouragement into your child um, so that way they will be able to love others in the same way and follow your example. I'm excited to see what college has in store for me and I'm hoping to be able to find what I love to do and be able to impact the lives around me in every way that I can. So yeah.